Welcome to the SACS training video for nonlinear foundation analysis. In this video, we'll be creating a pile soil interaction input file to be used with our nonlinear foundation analysis. So, the first thing we're going to do is create a subdirectory in our training projects folder called static PSI, and then we're going to click the data file button in the interactive program launcher to open up DataGen. We're going to create a new data file and select pile soil interaction input file. Now, sometimes you'll get a window asking you for the units. Uh, in this case, I already have the default unit sets to English, so I'm going to define my file units to be metric forces in kilonewtons for this example. The next thing we're going to do is insert our PSI option line. So I'm going to click the insert input line, select PSI OPT, and click OK. This line sets a lot of the overarching options for the entire pile soil interaction. In this case we're going to be using the default unit so there are no changes that are required here. On the next line we're going to insert the plot request line. This defines what plots we want to create whenever we run our analysis. So in this example we're going to select yes for our soil data. We're going to select cross hatching, that's just how the, the uh, chart is going to be displayed. And a few other options such as our lateral deflection plots, our lateral soil reactions, our axial loads, and our axial reactions. The next thing we're going to define is our pile groups. So we're going to click the insert input line and select the PLGRUP line here. It's going to ask to insert a header, just select yes. And here we're going to define the pile uh, properties. This isn't going to define the pile itself, just the properties for one pile that can be placed later on. So the first pile we're going to call PL1 and it's going to have two segments. The first segment is going to be 106.68 centimeters, 2.5 centimeters thick, and 10 meters long. We're going to use the default material properties and then we're going to insert a second line for the second segment. Second segment, we have to name the same thing as the first segment, but we can change the properties here. So this one will also be 106.68 centimeters in diameter, but this will be 1.5 centimeters thick and 30 meters long. So this defines one pile. We're going to do this again for another pile group. Pile group 2. So we'll call this PL2. It's also going to be 106.68, 2.5, 10 meters. And then the second segment will be identical to the pile one. Now, for this example, these are identical, and you could probably call them the same thing, but this is just to show you how to define multiple pile groups. We're going to do one more pile group the conductors. So I'm going to select pile group option 
or pile group line one more time. Call this CND for conductor. And this is just going to have one segment because we're not going to increase the thickness near the top of the soil strata. So we're going to make the outside diameter 76.2 centimeters with a wall thickness of 2.54 centimeters and we'll make that 40 meters long. Okay, so we've defined our pile groups which have our material properties and section properties but we also need to define where the piles are in relation to our structure. To do that we're going to use the pile line. So go to your insert input line and select pile. This is going to require a header line. And the piles are going to be defined by connecting pile head joints in our SAX model file which, which were already defined in a previous example. We're going to enter in 101P for the first pile head joint name, PL1, which is the group that we defined up here. And then instead of using the XYZ coordinates to define our pile batter, we're actually going to use another joint in our SAX model file to define the batter. This is another pile further up on the leg. Additionally, we need to insert the uh, soil table ID. You can use multiple soil table IDs in your analysis and you can assign different soil table IDs to different piles. In this example we're just going to have one soil table and I'm going to name that SOL1. This is going to be defined later on in this example. Right, so now we need to define a few more piles. I'm just going to copy these lines so that it's a little bit easier just to modify some of the input values. The next pile is going to be 102P, 202P, and it's going to use pile group 2. The next pile after that is going to be 103P, 203P, pile group 1, and the next pile after that is going to be 104P, 204P, and pile group 2. We also need to define the conductors. So I'm going to create another line. This is going to be modified to be 105C, 205C, and then use the CND conductor group line. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it so I don't have to modify the group. The next one will be 106C, 206C. We have two more conductors to define. 107C, 207C, and 108C, and 208C. This is defined all of the pile geometry. Keep in mind that we defined the length of the, se the pile segment in the group line, so really this just defines where it connects to the structure and what angle uh, it, it's oriented in relation to the structure and the mud line. Okay, so the last thing that we need to define in this input file is the soil properties. The soil properties for this example can be found in section 2 of the training manual that's provided with this video. The first thing we're going to define are the axial properties for the soil. So we're going to go to insert input line select TZ axial head. We're going to define our properties with TZ curves which are defined for each soil strata. There are other ways to define axial properties for the soil but we won't be covering those in this example. This line requires a header. 
and what we need to know for this soil is how many strata there are and then the uh, T factors for the soil as a whole. So I'm going to put an 8 for the number of soil strata, 0 0.0627 for the T factor, and 2.54 for the Z factor. I'm going to name this soil table ID soil 1 so that all of these piles are referring to this soil table and click apply. Now we need to define the first soil stratum. Select insert TZ axial stratum. This TZ SLOC line right here. We're going to turn on symmetrical which means that the TZ properties are the same in all directions. We're going to define how many points there are on this uh, stratum. Define the distance to the top of the stratum and we're going to leave the distance to the bottom of the stratum blank. This means that there will be a linear distribution between the top of the stratum and the top of the next stratum so we get a continuous change in the soil stiffness. Now we need to define the actual TZ values for this stratum. So go to insert input line and select TZ axial. You can then enter in the TZ values here. Make sure that you enter in the T values in the T uh, value slot and the Z values in the Z value slot or else you will get uh, an odd graph that probably won't converge. I'm just going to quickly type these in. Again, you can reference these in the training manual. OK. And now we're going to repeat this process for each of the strata in this soil table. After we've defined the axial strata, we can define the bearing capacity for the end of the pile. So we're going to in we're going to insert input line bearing head. And we can define multiple soil strata so that SACS will automatically pick up what the bearing should be depending on where the pile tip is located. In this example will do two soil strata with a Z factor of 2.54. We're also going to call this soil 1. So it's associated with this axial capacity and these piles. Next we need to define the stratum. So here we'll select soil bear SLOC. There's going to be two points with the top of the stratum being at 22.5 meters and we're going to put a 0 0.00015 T factor on that. Then we're going to insert input line soil TZ and we'll put a 1.0 39.37. On the next stratum, I'm going to copy and paste this, insert it here, change this stratum location to 48.5 with the same T factor, and change this TZ value to 1.25 and 39.37. Now even though we don't have any torsional stiffness defined in our soil properties, we still want to define a torsional stiffness so that our piles are stable. So the next thing we're going to insert is the torsional head. I'm going to define the soil table ID as soil 1. 
with a torsional linear stiffness of 5,000. This is going to apply up and down the length of the entire uh, pile, so it will be stable. Now we need to do the lateral stiffness for the soil. So we're going to insert input line soil lateral head and define the number, number of soil strata. So in this case, we'll have 10 soil strata with a y factor of 2.54. Soil table ID is soil 1. And we can turn on PY curve scaling option. Uh, this will modify our PY curve based upon the relative size of our pile to the reference pile diameter. In this case, the reference pile diameter is 50 centimeters. Next, we need to define our soil strata. So we're going to pick out soil PY SLOC. Again, we're going to make the PY curve symmetrical in both directions. Five points on the PY curve. And this uh, first stratum is going to start at the mud line. So we're going to leave it at zero. We now need to define the PY values by selecting soil PY and inserting the values from the soil properties table. We'll now repeat this for every stratum. Finally, put an end line at the end of your file, and you can save it as a PSI input file. PSI INP dot dat. Your PSI input file is now complete and is ready to be used as input for your nonlinear foundation analysis. Thank you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.